Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If you are new here, I'm Rebecca. But if you are already subscribed, welcome back. As you can see from the title below, today I'll be giving you guys a little recap or an overview of my third year of medical school. I am already halfway through my fourth year of medical school and this video is just overdue. So normally I would do a recap after completing each year of medical school but I was not sure if I wanted to do one for my third year just because a lot of things happened and it wasn't like the happiest moment in medical school. However, a lot of you guys wanted to know my opinions and thoughts about my third year of medical school especially semester six since a lot of you guys will be entering your clinical school soon i was just like you know what let's just film this video as i previously mentioned my third year of medical school was a crazy one because it involves a transition phase from being a preclinical student to a clinical student and i also needed to move to a new city so i would say that involved a lot of major life changes so in this video i'll be talking about both semester five and semester six but mainly focusing on semester six because because semester 6 was longer and I'll also share about my thoughts and what I've learned throughout the year stay tuned before you continue watching don't forget to click the subscribe button down below okay, let's start with semester 5 semester 5 was really important for me as well as my other course mates that's because it determined if we could enter clinical school so if you don't pass your FPP part 2 you won't be able to proceed into clinical school I wouldn't go in depth about the whole FPP part 2 just because I have already uploaded an entire video regarding that on my youtube channel however it was quite different because everything was online and we had four full days of examination we had two days of theory and two days of oski i guess what made it so different was the way how our oski was carried out we weren't able to do our physical examination so we were only tested on like history taking and also counseling we were tested about everything that we've learned from semester two up until semester five that was a lot but it wasn't really too stressful for me because it was open book in semester five we also had our two weeks posting they will either send you to Kuala Kubu Baru or Jempol I got Jempol it was supposed to be a two week long posting but then it got shortened to one week because COVID was really really bad that time I would say that would be my highlight of semester 5 because everything was just so fun my routine in Jempol was super fun because it was kind of chill I would spend almost the entire day in the hospital and then once I come back I will have dinner with my friends we will go to like the nearby restaurants together or like the mark so everything was super fun oh and we also got to visit like waterfall did a barbecue at night together that was just my highlight once i passed fpp part 2 and i knew for sure that i would be going to seremban for my clinical phase that's when all of the semester six preparation started so i had to do like house hunting i had to decide whether i want to live by myself or live with housemates semester six was one of the toughest six months of my entire medical journey i wouldn't entirely blame it on the things that we learned or the new environment that I was put into during semester 6 but it was mainly because of my personal things that I have to handle by myself I was and am currently working on something that is equally as important as medical school it was a really stressful period for me because I had to learn how to equally divide my time between medical school and the things that I was working on it was just so crazy I've never felt that stressed out in my life before I can't really share about what I went through and what I'm currently working on but I promise you guys one day I'll be telling you guys everything actually I also filmed the entire process so you guys gotta stick around for who knows how long for semester six we had three posting we had surgery internal medicine and also family medicine i'll be giving you guys a little details about each posting i started semester six with my surgery rotation because i'm in group c i would say it's the heaviest out of all rotation in semester six but it was not as tough as i thought it would be when someone talks about surgery you would think of all the different procedures that you have to do but when you're a medical student you don't have to really know about the details of each procedure so for example let's say you're learning about appendicitis which is an inflammation of your appendix so how would you manage it is by appendectomy you just have to know the name of the procedure like appendectomy which means to remove your appendix you don't really have to know where to incise how long to incise okay so i would say my surgery posting was really fun but i don't think i would want to be a surgeon one day i don't think that's for me but it was really fun i love suturing i love 
I love everything about surgery actually. So internal med, my favorite posting out of that three. Internal med is very general, like you have to know everything and it involves a lot of thinking. Because most of the things that are happening inside the body of a patient are correlated, so you have to figure it out. That was very thrilling and fun for me. Okay, for internal medicine, it requires a lot of your preclinical knowledge. So if you have a strong foundation, you are good to go. So you definitely have to recap a lot on your preclinical lectures. Don't worry because the lecturers and the internees are more friendly compared to the surgeons. You will have fun learning internal med. I ended my semester 6 with family medicine rotation. It's the chillest out of all three. There will be a lot of KK visit. That also required me to travel a lot to different clinic kesihatan. It was chill and it was a good rotation for me to end my third year of medical school with. However, there are tons of CPG that you have to know. CPGs are clinical guidelines. Most of your exam questions will be based on that. Phew, I tell you, that was a nightmare for me because I had to balance between medical school and the thing that I was working on. So I didn't really have time to read through all of the CPG. It's a killer for me. Don't do it. The lecturers from family medicine would be the kindest of all. So that was my overview for semester 5 and semester 6. Right now, I'll be talking about what I've learned and what I want you guys to know about third year of medical school. The first thing that I want you guys to know is that everything is going to be a blur, but it's okay. It's okay guys. When you first enter clinical school, you will feel as if everything is just so out of place and your life is so messy. But I promise you guys that everybody is going through the same thing and you're not alone. There's a lot of life changes that happen for you to get into clinical school. You yourself had a lot of stresses. You had to move to a new city. You had to leave your loved ones and your close friends behind. It's only normal for you to feel like everything is such a blur because everything is just so new to you. I'm so glad that I'm able to share with you guys this advice because I wouldn't be able to give that advice to myself six seven months ago so I really hope that you guys remember that you guys are going through a lot of changes Just keep moving and try your best to adapt to the new environment don't compare yourself to others because some of us may adapt easier but some of us may not take your own time okay when you're going through this process of adapting to a new environment you will find that some days you're okay some days you will find it harder to cope with i will strongly encourage you guys to have someone to talk to. You could reach out to your closest siblings or your friends. There's always gonna be someone out there for you. If you wanna talk to me, just DM me. I don't mind. Okay, so the second thing that I've learned and I want you guys to know is to have a little more grace and be a little more kind to yourself. When you're under a lot of stress, it's really easy for you to be harsh on yourself, especially if you're a perfectionist. For me, semester one up until semester five, my focus was entirely on medical school. I was putting 100% to medical school. But when I entered semester 6, everything changed. I couldn't put my 100% into medical school. I had to give about 70% to the thing that I was working on and 30% to medical school. It was really hard for me to accept the fact that I wasn't putting 100% into medical school. I couldn't find a balance. If I was studying for medical school, then I would be like, why am I not doing that thing? If I'm doing that thing, I would be so guilty for not doing medical school. So just remind yourself that everybody is going through something. It's just that you don't know what they're going through. All of us have hard Cheap. It's easy for us to assume that everyone else have a perfect life but that's not the case. It's just that whether or not that person chooses to talk about it. And also, reward yourself even if you feel like you don't deserve it. We are our harshest critic. We might feel we aren't working as hard as we should so we don't reward ourselves but reward yourself even if you don't feel like you deserve it because most of the time you do. The third thing I want you guys to know is that put yourself first and stay true to yourself. When you enter clinical school, everything's gonna change. Most of your classmates will change. From what I've observed, a lot of people will have that attitude where they will give off that vibe like, Ooh, I'm now in clinical school. I'm one step closer to becoming a doctor. And then when they walk around, they'll be like, mm, I know this, I know this. Yeah, everything will change, guys. I have no idea why people become like that when they enter clinical school, but stay true to yourself, guys. You don't want to become one of those. Arrogance is one of the last things that you want yourself to be labeled with. The most important thing is you and your mental health. So if you need to do something that would be beneficial for your mental health, just do it. If you have to say no to certain invitation or someone for your mental health, just say no guys. You don't have to explain yourself. It's not your duty to explain your action. So if you want to do it, just do it. 
that's it. I have learned a lot, but those are the three main points that I want you guys to know. And I hope that you guys found that useful. One mindset I want you guys to have is to not think that something will be hard before even knowing about it. A lot of people and a lot of seniors will be like, Oh my god, it's gonna be very hard. Oh my god, I pray that you can get through it. Oh my god, it was the toughest moment of my life. You just know it when they don't have that good intention. I think it's also just part of my personality that I like positive vibes only. I didn't give way to a lot of those negative thoughts. I always believe that if you think something is tough, it's gonna be tough. If you think something is easy, it's gonna be bearable or easy. So might as well just think that it's gonna be okay and easy, right? You're welcome. We have come to the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are coming to IMU Serban, I can't wait to hopefully one day bump into you guys. In the meantime, just enjoy. Binge watch on all of the Netflix shows that you can. Don't forget to click the subscribe button down below and give this video a thumbs up. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!